downtown now. It's about soul health and soul function. Unfortunately, being an NRCS employee and working in four states, I couldn't help some of my landowners become sustainable. So I've taken this to be a personal mission because I want every one of you who farm and ranch to be sustainable. I want that farm and ranch to be passed to the next generation. So how do we start? How do we start in this fantastic journey of humic hope? I like that, didn't you? <laughs> We're gonna start with this fantastic test, ladies and gentlemen. It's called the aggregate stability test. Some call it the slate test. And what we do is we grab soils that are dry in your field. How many of you have watched the Mythbusters? How many of you watched the Mythbusters? A little cool show, isn't it? And he says, now, we're professionals. Don't do this, because you'll hurt yourself. Farmers and ranchers, I want you to do this. Please do this test. It's simple. What we're going to do is you're going to see these containers. You see in front of us. I'm going to... I already selected. Would you come up, please? She's going to help us. And her name is Ashley. Ashley's going to come. Now, Ashley, I want you to go behind this jar right there. Get up and, so that people can see you. And we got Hans Koch. He's going to help these. He's one's the camera. He's my partner in crime. Now, the way the test works, ladies and gentlemen, you collect your soil from your fields and let it air dry. I have done this with a microwave. You want all the moisture out of the clod. When you go to school, you can call it a pen. After eight years of graduate school, you can call it a pen or an aggregate. I call it a clod. So what I threw at my sisters. Just get that clod, dry it. Put it in the microwave. Until it gets completely dry, you want all the moisture out. Okay, the way this test works, you've got to get all the moisture out of the clod. And what I want you to do is you pick it up into your field, and you can pick it up random. So what we have here, we have a clod here from North Carolina, because I live in North Carolina and I work with a farmer, Ray Styers. Ray Styers has not used chemical fertilizer, ladies and gentlemen, in 16 years. He has eliminated phosphorus from his operation in the last six years. He has reduced his herbicides by 75%. His organic matter on this soil, it's 2.75% organic matter. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. 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 This one is the neighbors. Conventional, vegetable, and these two farms are a mile apart. The sad thing, ladies and gentlemen, these two farms are located by Reedsville, which is the water source for Reedsville, the town. These farms butt up against the lake. Just keep in mind that. And this is beautiful Indiana soil. I don't remember where we got it, guys, but it's conventional tillage. Now, this is the way it's going to work. Ashley is going to drop these aggregates into these tall cylinders. What we want to see is which one does not fall apart. We don't want it to fall apart. We want to see which one holds its integrity when the water rushes in to fill the pore spaces. Okay? To fill the pore spaces. So water is going to rush in and the forces, we want to see which one's going to withstand the forces of that pressure as that water enters the pores. Because ladies and gentlemen, if you don't have pores, you don't have infiltration. And if you don't have infiltration, the water's going to run off. So it's very important that we get the water into the soil. This is the no-till, 40 year. Okay, the next one. Conventional vegetable. Do the next one, conventional Indiana. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I traveled 35 states in the last seven years. I've been to Alaska. I've been to Puerto Rico. I've been all over the country. This happens to all the soils. The same thing happens. Why is that precious soil, conventional, falling apart, ladies and gentlemen? What is going on? So what is causing this great problem? What is? Lack of soil porosity. Lack of soil porosity. 
What happened? How does the soil hold together, by the way? Humus. Humus. Beautiful. Who said that? You get an award. We don't know what it is, but you got one. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the organic matter, the humus, the biotic glues are created by organisms. As an earthworm as going through the soil, doing its business, ingesting, putting particles through there, ingesting particles, taking in carbon, doing what it's supposed to do, it creates these biotic glues. Bacteria, as they're doing their business in decomposition, they create these biotic glues. Saprophytic fungus, as they're searching for water, as they create that relationship with those roots, they create these glue called, what guys? Indiana? Oh, oh you're giving me goosebumps. They remember. They remember. It's a glue. It's a polysaccharide. It's carbon-based glue, ladies and gentlemen. It's a carbon-based glue. Do you mean that our soil is a living ecosystem? Now, what happened to the glues? What happened to the glues? Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you run that vertical tail, the moment you run that disc into that soil, guess what you do? You force the soil, and it's called mineralization. What you do is you get the disc, you force air into the soil system, and then you wake up these critters called copotrophic bacteria. They have an incredible metabolic rate. They start eating your organic matter. They start eating your biotic glues. And as they eat that carbon, they die, they mineralize, and they release nitrate. Oh, and guess what else you did when you ran that vertical dill machine, or that disc, or the plow, or any disturbance? You brought weed seeds to the top of the surface. You stimulated secondary secession in one event, ladies and gentlemen. One event, as you ran that disc, you mineralized, you released nitrates. Oh, and weeds love nitrate, by the way. Predominant nitrogen that they love. So what you did, I did, what I did when I ran my disc, oh, and I hated that. You stimulated secondary secession. And you got the weed seeds to the surface, and the weed said, Thank you, Dean. I love you, man. <laughs> Farmers love wheat. I'm convinced they love wheat. Not all of them, but that's what we did. I know, I farm too. And I, so here's what we've done. So you've got to understand, you force the system. You prime the soil, and you got these bacteria, the copotrophic bacteria, with a high metabolic rate, you start eating the glues. <coughs> They're there, folks, and you cannot get rid of them. We need the copotrophic. They're there to decompose residue. But you don't want them to decompose your structure and your organic matter. When you disc, oh, I had a farmer in Montana, you know what the farmer said? But Ray, we can't get rid of the disc. I said, well, why? He says, because when I disc my cover crops, I get a great response. And I wanted to pull my hair. I said, you know what you just did? You burned your house just to roast a hot dog. <laughs> you didn't need to do that. You burned the house. Folks, when you do that, you burn the house. When we put our manure out there and they force us to disc it in, we burn the house. The microbes are going to go, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now you gave me a food source. Plus, I'm going to eat all the glues that were there and the organic matter. And there goes Grandpa's farm up in the atmosphere. Ouch.